Well, welcome to this episode of Cheshireville Community Church, a life story. This is a podcast that delves deep into the heart of the human experience, one remarkable story at a time. Every day, you and I interact with all different kinds of people. That may be a work associate, maybe our neighbor, maybe the barista who serves us our coffee. But each and every person has been formed by life events. And that is equally true for a community of believers. This venue is a way for us to share our stories and to become better acquainted and connected to the larger community of believers. If you're a member of CCC, our guests today are totally, really don't need an introduction. Uh, they have been the mainstay for CCC for nearly three decades. They have walked with you in the best of times and in those moments when you felt like life could not get any worse, they have been there for you. They've listened to you. They've cried with you. They've encouraged you. And they prayed for the peace of God to be upon you. So I am speaking no other than our beloved Pastor Randy and his lovely wife, Karen. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Keith. I know that we could spend hours talking about and unpacking your lives before CCC, but for this episode, we we only have a limited amount of time, so (laughs) we will focus on the the ministry uh, here at CCC. So to kind of set this up, you were serving in California in a large, vibrant uh, church. So how did you even hear about CCC when you were 1,800 miles plus away? Yeah, my, my mentor, Mike Story, mm-hmm. was invited here um, for a conference of some kind, um, discipleship conference or a revival or something. And he called us and said, um, this might be a good place for mm-hmm. for you guys and your family. It's a good area, so forth and so on. And uh, I had said, we we really know, not we're kind of satisfied where we're at right. and uh, that sort of thing. Well, he came back about six, eight months later and then called back and said, uh, um, I really think this would be a good place for you. And almost like Paul to Timothy, you know, saying, hey, I want you to go to Ephesus. Uh, he, he basically said, I think this would be a really good place for you. Mm-hmm. And, and again, we kind of... I said, no, you know, I was already becoming a Dodger fan, that sort of thing. And um, he said, would you at least pray about it? And I said, well, yeah, I can pray about it. So it was in that kind of a a setting for the next seven or eight months, basically. uh, There was a a real wrestling match with with what what does God want us to do? do? We we, we weren't against coming here. We just couldn't figure it out. Why why would we go that way and then come back in in a short amount of time, four and a half years? Okay. But— for Karen, you're you're from California, right? Right. Yeah. So was that was that close to where you grew up, or um, it serving? was in the same area where I actually where we lived was the town I was born in. But oh, really? but California is a very large state. My right. parents were up north, so yeah. they were a seven hour drive away. Oh, okay. So we didn't have family that lived the, the, where there. we were living. We okay. were in Southern California. Okay. So okay. All right. So before you actually came to CCC, and and did you felt like you came as in view of a call and those types of things, and you kind of knew you were coming here, felt like that. How would you describe CCC to your friends and family? At that point? At that point, yeah. Uh, small. 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 Um, they had a uh, part-time uh, admin lady uh, mm-hmm. at, at the desk, mm-hmm. and that was about it for the staff. Mm-hmm. Um um, there were it was small, but it was the, the families were together. I mean, you could tell there was some unity here. Mm-hmm. There was a desire here. Yeah, uh, the area was a very good area. We could see that quickly. Yeah, um, but it's just small. And they had been through some trauma. They had. Yeah. Um, we, we had a friend that was a, kind of the interim pastor here, and he had helped them work through some of that. Mm-hmm. But about three and a half years before we got here, they had had a pretty pretty good shakeup. Okay. All right. So can you share your initial feelings and thoughts when you first arrived on the field then, you know, 28 and a half years ago? What were, what were your expectations? Um, well, thoughts and expectations may be a little different. Initially, um, I would say I'm a mom, so I'm wonder, worried about my kids, kids right. and how they're going to fit in. And all what, were the, what were their ages at that time? They were uh, second grade, fourth grade freshman and sophomore in high school. Oh, okay. 
So that was part of our turmoil. Yeah, our turmoil in moving was: do we move high school age high school age kids? And um, and so that was really hard, and it was an adjustment. That Mm -hmm. was a big adjustment for the kids coming here. Um, So expectations, you know, we we were here to to serve the church. So that was once we said yes, that was it. You know, that was the expectation. But um, I'm still a mom, so I'm trying to help the kids find where they fit in and some different sports things and um, some adjustments, even in the school system was so different. And even the culture was very different in Chesterfield compared how, to what they were used to. So how was, how was that different for, for you and the kids? Um, you know, we love it here, mm-hmm. but it's very materialistic. Um, the, the, the students at the school, it was just very worldly. Mm -hmm. Um, everything was about the brand clothes you wear, Mm -hmm. things like that. We just weren't used to that. We didn't have that, you know? Uh Um, and so there was just a little bit of a different mindset Mm -hmm. and the schools in California where we were at were probably a lot more conservative than they were here too. Yes. Yes. Really? Oh yeah. They would sing Christmas songs at their Christmas events. Uh, There there was, there was no, um, there was no, uh, it's woke now, but there was none of that there, really. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas here, we, we found, wow, they, they really leaned to a to a liberal agenda in the mm-hmm. education system. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was just different for us. Yeah. 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 So nearly over three decades of ministry, what are some of the most memorable moments or milestones you've experienced here? Um, you know, it's going to be a little different. Karen's going to remember probably uh, events. I'm, I'm, I remember, remember more of the, you know, we came in with guns blazing. Uh-huh. We're going to change things. You had uh, your 100-day agenda. 100-day agenda. We're going to change 10 things. And yeah. about half of them were pretty serious issues. Uh-huh. Um, not included in that was a name change. Mm-hmm. And so we did change the name uh, after about four years, three or four years. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went to elders. Those mm-hmm. were pretty big events Those in the churches. Significant, yeah. Uh, that was in about year four or five. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some of those were immediate changes. And to see the church family come together uh, with unity mm-hmm. in seeking that, yeah. uh, that was that was a pretty big, pretty big event. And yeah. then the others are just events. I mean, we've had... You know, I, I think of the Million Man uh, Gathering in D.C. Oh, that yeah. we took a group to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think of the immediate trust they gave me. Uh, almost scared me to a degree. I, 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 in what way? Um, well, I came in with an agenda, and uh, they basically said, go do it. Okay. <laughs> That's unheard of in a Baptist church, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I found myself <laughs> yeah. about a year or two into it going to like, you know, we, this needs to be shared right. leadership, not right. just somebody leading from a vacuum and right. inside of an office and coming out. And here's where we're going to go. Don't now. say it, the Lord from yeah. from. And so that was a good thing, but yet it was is also kind of a wake up call. You need you need to share this yeah. leadership. Yeah. So, so how about you, Karen? Um, I think <clears throat> I I have so many memories of things that like that are so funny. So many okay. funny things that have happened over the last 28 years. I uh, and and because there's so many people that have either passed away or moved on, there's things I'll say and ha- and there's only a couple people that still would know those. Not, yeah. But, yeah. but um oh, we used to have the seniors used to have the best Christmas party here. Mm-hmm. And they would always invite Randy and I to come to the senior Christmas party. We absolutely loved it. They would talk about things back from when they were kids. Mm-hmm. And Clayton and Helen Flynn were just the funniest because they started dating or loving each other in middle school. And they had some <laughs> of the funniest stories, stories. stories and um I remember our first Christmas here, we had a it was in the winter here. We were going to the women were doing a, a night out to eat and it got icy. Oh, yeah. And I had my van and I was going to drive women to eat. And we started out up here, picked the women up. We drove down the back thing and I just started turning sideways and we just slid down the hill. <laughs> and Joyce Bateman, we were all going, whoo, just right here we went. And uh, so we had, you know. So you made it to your destination oh, safely. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. We just... made it. I, the first VBS we had here. Uh, I was helping out and, you know, I'm the new, the new pastor's wife and I was with a bunch of kids and there was a part we were doing where we were burning our sin. We we're talking about our sin and uh-huh. we put it in this little pot and we were burning because it would be no more. Oh, once. Right. Go- you know, I didn't realize I burned a whole hole in the floor and it probably is still down there in the carpeting. And <laughs> I was like, oh, look what I, 
<laughs> I just did. <laughs> so, I mean, I had, I, I just started writing down things because, oh, it, you know, the, one of the last ones, there's so many. I started thinking of them, and there'll be more. Uh-huh. But the Sunday that Dave and Don announced that they were having Joshua, because oh. they had the two little girls, mm-hmm. and there was a pretty big age difference before they had him. So, um, w- no one thought there would be any more leads. Right, yeah. And so, he announced that in the church service. It was just like, you could hear a pin drop. It was just like, <laughs> I just don't really? remember. Really? really, Dave and Don. <laughs> so uh, there's there's so many things like yeah. that, you know. Yeah. So, uh, I think of funny Some things. Happy, Some happy, 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 funny happy things. Memories, yes. Yeah. Um, sometimes the funniest moments are at weddings. Did you have any f- funny things that happen at weddings? Well, there's always strange things that happen. <laughs> they're strange. Yeah. You, yeah. Drop, you dropped a ring at uh, Whitney's wedding. Yeah, yeah that, that's that the wasn't first that time that it ever ago. happened. Yeah, yeah, I dropped a ring out of the out of the Bible. Out of the Bible. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I mean, we, when uh, when Kristen got married, mm-hmm. um, that was a, an interesting one. I was going to do the service, but as I was also now going Kristen to is my daughter, daughter, right? My daughter, okay. And so I was going to do the service as well as give her away. Wait, uh-huh. And so her brothers stood up as we came down the aisle and mm. did the intro. Who mm. gives this woman to be married? This man. <laughs> that would be, would be odd. And then I stepped around, yeah. and then I barely made it through it. They had a yeah. little piece in there about their purity rings and how uh-huh. that they put them in little boxes, and they're going to give them away oh. to their kids when they get to that age. And, wow. And um, he got pretty special. choked up about that. So. He, 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 got, he got so choked up, and then Kristen and Nate were choked up. And at one point, Randy said, I think we all need to just take a break for a minute. And we did. <laughs> take a break for a minute. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, ministry comes with its challenges as well. Can you recall maybe a particularly difficult time or a period of situation in the church life? And how did you navigate that as a couple? You know, um, we've had a we've had such a blessed— I've, I've, Tell my pastor friends, I've told others, family members, this has been a blessing to mm-hmm. pastor. Mm-hmm. Um, this church has been so loving to us and mm-hmm. so unified yeah. on so many fronts that um, we've not really struggled with a lot of what churches struggle with. Mm-hmm. Um, some of our struggles here were, there, there were a few years the budget was extremely tight. Yeah. And so that presents a lot of challenges. and. Mm-hmm. Um, air conditioners. We were when we came. Uh, two of our main air conditioners were forty years old, and they had gotten them used, and so we didn't know how old they were. They're fifty or sixty years old, oh, and wow. so we knew. In fact, we we kept them alive as long as we could. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys came and told us, if we have to move this, it'll fall apart. It's rusted to the point it will actually fall apart. Oh goodness! And so there were you know challenges that way. The mm-hmm. small building. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember in Easter, we've had over 300 people in, in our old worship center mm-hmm. and, and yeah. trying to do brunch mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. We've yeah. had funerals where there were over 200 people right. at the funeral and mm-hmm. people sitting in the foyer area and and just, uh, you know, the smallness of the building. There was a yeah. real challenge yeah. of what it looked like to yeah. the community. And yeah. so uh, there were challenges that way. Mm-hmm. Um you know, there are always uh, church challenges within inside the church and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. But we, we've really had a—God's uh, just really blessed in, in giving us a lot of peace, a lot of unity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in those times, I think, you know, as a couple, you know, we talk about it, we pray, mm-hmm. and we just get to work. You yeah. know, some, some of the biggest uh, probably um, downsides have been in this area— it's a it's a fairly transient area, uh, mid to upper level management, mm-hmm. and so especially when times are good, people tend to be moved around by their companies or they take new jobs, jobs in right. different companies. Yeah. And so this has been a pretty constant through the 28 years we've been here mm-hmm. to see leadership come into the church and be discipled and trained mm-hmm. and ac- accept leadership positions, and then they move away. Yeah, you know, to yeah. Indianapolis or Florida or Texas or yeah. Uh, it started early. I mean, we had people move into to Baltimore within the first four months of being here wow. in Florida. Um, then another one of our key leaders moved to Nashville, and uh, that's just been an ongoing thing. It seems like three steps forward and then two steps back. back. Yeah, yeah. So, so what are some of the core values or beliefs that you've consistently upheld in your ministry, and how have they shaped your leadership? 
Well, we came in, you know, with the core value of making disciples intentionally Mm -hmm. and had a specific plan to do that. And so we pretty well stayed the course on that. Um, uh, That we we believed in good teaching, teaching Mm -hmm. the Bible. Right. And um, we've stayed with that, I think, pretty well. Hopefully, it's gotten a little better over the years. <laughs> In fact, I hope it's gotten a lot better, actually, mm-hmm. over the years. Uh, small group ministries, we, that was a core value we had. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've both been actively involved in that, mm-hmm. uh, trying to have... Uh, we've had small groups in our homes for years um, and try to model that as well as help lead the church to do that. Um, so those are some of the values that, that I'd say we, we've had. And I mean, if you, we want to stay as close to the Bible as possible in all things and glorify Christ, lift him up in all things. Thanks. That's right. that's pretty normal for most right. evangelical right. churches. Right. Uh, but probably for ours, it's the intentionality of the disciple-making process. Yeah. You have anything you want to add, Karen, when it comes uh, to that? I or? was just, just thinking about um, Luke 9.23, just mm-hmm. denying ourselves, Den- taking oh, up our yeah. cross. That would be yeah. the core value. That's one of, one and of the following new him. Yeah. And, um, and I was going to say, there were some times in the early years where, because this was a challenge coming here, mm-hmm. where the the way that, the size of the church, what mm-hmm. we were doing, mm-hmm. and there where I wondered if the boat would float. I mean, I... And it was fearful. Uh-huh. Um, and I and I think going back to core values, those were times where I got to learn to just get on my face before God and, mm-hmm. and realize he's faithful and to trust mm-hmm. him no matter what. Um, another core value for me in being a pastor's wife was just learning my identity is in Christ and that uh, it was okay to be who God made me to be. Yeah. I didn't have to be like somebody else. Yeah. And I am who I am. And uh, and. As long as that's in his lane, right, exactly. <laughs> biblical lane, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. So that's good. That's good. Uh, so, reflecting on your time here, what do you believe is the most significant impact or legacy that you'll leave behind here at CCC? Well, kind of going back to the the disciple making, I, I believe uh, we we have equipped a lot of people to be be disciples. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've equipped some people to be disciple makers, and I believe there will be disciple makers when we leave. Yeah, that's always the test. I mean, Paul's greatest fear, as best I can understand it, was that he had labored in vain. Mm-hmm. And I feel the same in the sense that I believe there will be people continuing the process of intentional disciple making when we're gone. But there's always that has to happen, and we have to leave for that to take place. Um, but that's that would be a, a fear. Is that right. will they take that and run with that? Right. Yeah. Because uh, I really believe Satan fights against this kind of church, mm-hmm. and uh, he fights against all churches. Right. But uh, there are so many good things churches can be about, and yes. I, and so we have intentionally said this is our focus, and we're not going to let something take it away from mm-hmm. our fo- our focus away from that. Right. Which means at times we've had to say no to some things and say mm-hmm. no to certain directions and that sort of thing. Um, and so you can, just go, can you give an example of maybe what you said no to as a church? I mean, uh, um, there were there were times when there were ministries in the area that mm-hmm. I could have been a part of. Mm-hmm. We've thrown it out a little bit to the people of the church if they would want to take it and run with it and mm-hmm. thrive ministry here in town. And for a while we had people leading that ministry, but after. Uh-huh. They were gone. Then no one picked that mantle up. Well, mm-hmm. what do we do? Yeah. Well, I'm got. I'm focused, it's and so unless up, somebody right, picks that so. ball up and runs right. with it, I, yeah. I'm not going to do that. Right. And yeah. um, and no, those are just you know various things that are. What what do we do as a church to continue this process right. of life change and life change mm-hmm. teaching mm-hmm. and small groups? These are our values. Right. Um, letting leaders lead. Yeah. Which means I have to take my hands off of things. Yeah. Is that and, hard for you to do? Well, and sometimes it is. <laughs> what are you laughing at, kid? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it is. Actually, sometimes it's not so hard. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't get involved in women's ministry, I can tell you that. <laughs> it's a, not hard for me to stay my hands off. That's a wise man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I, I believe, you know, when we built the building, I think that was that was a huge event for mm-hmm. us because mm-hmm. we started seeing the moment we stepped here, 
Yeah. That this church is a lot bigger than what it looks like from the street. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more going on here mm -hmm. than what people realize in the community. Right. And um, I mean, our ministries to Al Anon and AA have been thriving yeah. almost from the beginning, mm -hmm. um, and other ministries. And so we knew that something's holding us back. Right. And so we, we didn't want to say it's bricks and mortar. Right. So we poured our time and energy into to flesh and blood to, in the people. Disciple making. Um, but at the same time, at some point, we had to say, you know, the bricks and mortar are, are limiting us. Right. And we started early in 2008, 2007, talking about the new building. And, and then? Elders were very smart and saying, be careful. It, the the, the economy is about to fall off the cliff. And right. it did. It did. Right. And we know churches that were just getting into building projects then, and actually no churches in the air that went under. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were very smart in saying we can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's taken that long to get back to mm -hmm. the point of saying, okay, when mm -hmm. are we going to build? And so mm -hmm. even though we, we built our building in, what, four, four or five years ago, mm -hmm. uh, it feels like we've been building it from the time we got here. <laughs> because... Right. I just knew that right. this, this building is not going to draw our yeah. community. Right. Uh, yeah. In fact, we had an we had an expert come in our area to to talk about that sort mm -hmm. of thing, and that's the first thing he said. I see I see exactly where your guys are at. He said, "I've driven up and down Olive. There are three old buildings. They're all old churches." Mm -hmm. And he said, that "Everything else is new around here." Yeah. He says, "I know exactly where you're at." Yeah. And so, um, you know, that's to have the building on the ground is not just it's wonderful to preach out of that new building and right. worship out of that new building. Right. It's it's wonderful to have that seating mm. there and be in one service, et cetera. Mm. But I th look at it as being that it's wonderful for the future of the church. church right. Wish we could have had that when we got here, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. So that that's a big deal to us. Yes. And, and okay. I, I believe we're leaving that behind in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see it paid off earlier, but <laughs> I think we all would, I think. Yeah. I, yeah. One thing I, I think too on the legacy part is um leaving leaving a legacy, I hope, from us, an example of transparent and honest living. Mm. And um I one of the things I love about this church, and a lot of it has to do with some of the the support group ministries that are mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm. but it has bled yeah, over into right. true, honest. We can be gut honest with each other. Mm -hmm. We can hear people. People should not be afraid to share what's really going on, and then we're there right. to love and support. Right. And so, not being afraid of hard things. Right. You know, that's and good. not being afraid to deal that's with good. hard things. So, I I think that's one of the things I do love about this yeah. church, and I hear that from people all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I found that. To be true to, I mean, we've only been here like a year and a half. And uh, so that was one of the things that we kind of noticed as we got to know people that, that yeah, there's that. And we've been recipients of that kind of love. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had family issues mm -hmm. that many in the church or at least key people in the church would know what we're going through mm -hmm. and the kind of love and, and, and patience and grace that they gave wow. to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's. That's cool. Can you all think of any particular person that you feel like that you've, it's been impacted, or is there is there's a, a I think it'd almost be unfair. Okay, <laughs> there, there are lots of persons, and, and to not name one would be really wrong. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Karen, you're not going to do either. You're not going to no, do that. No, I feel right? a little uncomfortable with okay. that because there are so That's many fine. people, and, and, and you fine. know, I can think of different people, right. but you know, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, that, that is that is person. that would that would be kind of hard to. It's, it's like, who's your favorite child? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I can tell you that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can say I have loved watching people that, um, when I look back at relationships that that were started and, mm -hmm. and not just not just from Randy and I throughout our church watching the process of I met them at school so, right. I met they were in my our kids were friends uh -huh. and watching what God has done, done. and the relationship just, the relational evangelism uh -huh. the relationship I, I love that yeah and I've seen it's not just us I see it around right yeah you know? yeah that's that's cool so so as you transition to the next chapter of your life, what advice or words of wisdom would you offer uh, to the congregation? I, I know that you're going to give a charge later, um, but... Um, Keep the main thing the main thing. Mm -hmm. 
Like I said, I, I really think um, the tyranny of the urgent uh, is mm-hmm. is just as much in the church world as it is in any other world. Yeah. And if Satan can, Satan can cause us to set down the things that God has called us mainly to do and pick up other things that are really good things and exchange the best for the, or change the good for the best or the best for the good, okay. however that's put, we drop the good to do the best. And there are many, or to, we, there are many good things that a church can do. Right, right. And so it's not like we're afraid the church is, but I, you don't want to put on the back burner that which is imperative, right. that which is critical, that which is core, that that which is, this is the real clear calling of God in our church and in mm-hmm. our lives. Keeping the main thing, the main thing is really a, a, a big and deal. And the main thing is? To make disciples. <laughs> okay. And make disciples who can make, make disciples. disciples. <laughs> Are you yeah. sure about that? You, sure? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I also, you know, I, I would look at a couple other items. There. I just maintain the unity. Mm-hmm. You know, when we when we left our, our church in California, we got, we well, when we got to our church in California, we discovered it was a church that was not unified. Mm-hmm. They didn't know that. Yeah. They just kind of put up with each other, but no one could take the helm and run in a direction because there was so much disunity. Mm-hmm. There was always somebody throwing roadblocks. Yeah. We worked pretty hard. And that was one of the reasons it was a struggle to come here because we had, we had kind of actually fought some of those battles right. and was, we're out on the other side right. when Mike called and said, hey, here's right. another church. Yeah. And so we came here. We we stressed being in being a, unifi- a unified church, church, a unified right. body, and, and, and taught what that meant. That didn't mean we all agree about everything all the time, mm-hmm. but that it's all for one and one for all. Yeah. And that we do go together. And this has had an amazing, this church is, I mean, I, I've said it from day one. This is the most amazing unity I've ever seen in a church. And and I really believe that the fastest way to unravel what God has done, the tapestry that he has built here mm-hmm. at CCC, the fastest way for that to unravel is disunity. Yeah. And so making sure that the church stays unified. And then, you know, the last thing on that would be just that it's a sailboat, not a cruise ship. You know, a sailboat is yeah. everybody got hands on deck, grab right. a rope, grab right. this. You got to hang out over the side. You got to do something. Uh, the analogy I've heard is similar to that. It's a battleship. Yeah. Not a cruise ship. Yeah. It's cool. Everybody, it's, we're in the battle together. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Thing you want to add, Karen, to that? The only thing I, I had was uh, actually a scripture because it's a scripture that's impacted me a lot in the last couple of years, just just in me personally. So, I, And I thought, this is a great verse for the church. Mm-hmm. It's Colossians 5, 12 through 15. Uh, since God, I don't think it's 5, it's 3. Colossians 3, 12 through 15. Since God chose you to be holy people, he loves you. People he loves, you must clothe yourself with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds... Whoops. What did I do with it? I lost it. Binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. I just love that passage. So what is it in particular that that you feel like that's a word for us to receive? I think it covers it all. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I really think it covers it all. Uh-huh. And I love the line about making allowances for one another because I don't right. think in today's culture people make allowance. allowances. We don't make right. allowances yeah. for anyone for anything. And if anybody ought to be making allowances, it ought to be in we, the church. Right. It ought yeah. to be people of faith. That's a that's a it's a good a good word. So, lastly, what do you both see in the future for CCC, and how do you hope to stay connected to CCC in the years to come? Well, I think the best days are still ahead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see, you know, one of the things I, I had felt, uh, we had been in churches that had grown numerically. Mm-hmm. Um, I had expectations of some numerical growth here. Mm-hmm. We've not reached those expectations. Right. Um, there have been lots of changed lives, and if about half of the people that moved away had stayed around, <laughs> we might have met some of those expectations. <laughs> so I'm not unhappy because yeah. the kingdom of God has it's expanded. expanded. Right, yeah. Uh, but I really think that, that this corner can be a place where a, a church of size, you know, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,200 people uh-huh. can gather. And, right. and I think a community begins to wake up and say, what's going on up there right. when, when that sort of thing happens? Right. And and I you know numbers aren't everything right, 
but I, do, I really think that um, to have the impact in the community that I've thought we should have, uh-huh. um, that numerical growth would be a part, a part of, that. of that. Right. And so yeah. I think the days ahead are really good days. And that, I'll be praying for that, watching online, yeah. um, connecting with a few people. We, right. we certainly want to have a good break. And, you know, that's sure. good for the church as well right. as for us. Right. Um, but. That, you know, I mean, you, you've. T- we I mean, will you, follow what's I know, going on. I know, but you've had relationships. I we mean, have a lot of friends. friends. Yeah. That's right. I mean, we, it's, it's it, not, we're not break, we're not breaking right. up. We're not breaking yeah. friendships. That's no. right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> we still have our friends, and you know, we we'd love people to come see us. I I mean, I've had a lot of people say they'd love to come see us. So yeah. we it's just if that. Will sings a song too fast, don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get on Facebook every Sunday. We'll be the one making all these weird comments on the Facebook page. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. So. Well, I, I can't speak for everybody, but I, 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 as you think about this new chapter and as you embark on this new chapter of your life, uh, on behalf of CCC, I want to extend our heartfelt gratitude and you, admiration. <sighs> This is hard. Do this is hard. <laughs> Don't do this, Keith. <laughs> uh, thank you for your li- your leadership and love. And uh, I knew this was going to be hard. I didn't, I didn't want to do this. <laughs> I appreciate it. But, but Randy, we've known each other for... We have. Yes. A long time. Right. Yep. And... Uh, and if we've only served together just a few months. Right. But uh, I, I just want to say that it's been very, it's been the most meaningful time to do that. Oh, isn't, that sorry, isn't that uh, God's timing, though, yeah. Keith? I mean, we feel that way. I mean, Randy's talked about you for a lot of years, and he wanted you here. <laughs> but longer before. <laughs> you just wouldn't go. I know, I know. <laughs> but I God, mean, yeah. isn't it beautiful that God orchestrated this right, at yeah. the time he did? Yeah, so, but um, anyway, Karen, I want to say thank you for being a friend of my wife. She loves the funny texts that you send to her and everything it makes her laugh and gives her great delight and joy. And you truly have been a genuine sister to her. I want to say thank you for that. So oh, I love your wife. Everybody so, loves your wife. <laughs> so um, I do I do want to say though, as you transition to the next season of life, um, you have left an indelible mark on the hearts and lives of hundreds and if not thousands of people. But I believe that you have two and a half to three more decades mm-hmm. of impactful ministry left. And uh, so it's with the deepest appreciation and gratitude that we pray that the Lord's hand will be upon you, that yes, he sir. will guide you. Uh, that his spirit will inspire you, inspire you to be more committed to Jesus Christ than ever before, mm-hmm. to see disciples mm-hmm. who make disciples and his kingdom is established mm-hmm. in on earth as it is in heaven. And that's what we're here for. So Amen. We, we are grateful for you. Thank you, Keith. All right. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate Thank you, man. We appreciate you, too. We love you. Love you too. Love you too man. We're excited. <laughs> it's like an adventure. It like, is. What's next, guys? It is. It is exciting, <laughs> and we're happy for you. So, well, that concludes this bubbling uh, <laughs> MC <laughs> uh, of life stories. Thank you so much for sharing and sharing your memories. We look forward to the days I've had uh, as we celebrate your life and ministry here at uh, Chesterfield Community Church. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.